In my last video, I casually mentioned that there are a few villages making up the municipality of Schildkuppen, and this resulted in a comment from one intrigued user wondering about the differences between German municipalities and American municipalities. And I thought, what an excellent idea for a boring video! And this is that video, so you might want to pause it now and go and make yourself a mug of very strong coffee. You're going to need it. Okay, now, the thing to bear in mind is that different countries do things in different ways. When I say municipality, I really mean the German Gemeinde. This is the word used in Germany to describe the lowest level of local government. And for the purposes of translation, municipality is a reasonably good approximation. It's quite likely, though, that in your country a municipality is not organised in the same way as a German Gemeinde. You may not even have municipalities in your country. In the past I've used the word parish because I'm from England, and in England we have civil parishes. But I stopped doing that because people thought I was talking about ecclesiastical parishes. Germany is divided into 16 states, of which three are city-states and so do not have municipalities. In the other states there are urban districts and rural districts. And in the rural districts there are municipalities. The exact details can vary from state to state, so no doubt there will be comments. But generally speaking, a municipality has an elected mayor, an elected council, and a town hall. Municipalities are responsible for things like garbage collection, the fire brigade, the registration of citizens, maintenance of local infrastructure, and if I seem a little distracted at the moment, it's because there are workmen outside finally putting in optical fibre cables for broadband internet. And that, by the way, was a project commissioned by the municipality. But there are a lot of small villages, like the one that I live in, which in May 2021 had a population of 229. A place that size just does not have the resources it needs, and so it's quite common for it to be incorporated into a larger municipality. There are different ways of doing this. Typically, a municipality might consist of a substantial town and some villages that are dependent on it. So, for example, the municipality of Nieheim consists of the town of Nieheim itself, plus nine other villages. Usually, the municipality will have the same name as the most important of its settlements, where the town hall is, but not always. Bernkastel Kuz is an example of a municipality named after two of its settlements, Kuz and Bernkastel. Another famous example is Garmisch-Partenkirchen. Sometimes the name of a municipality is a completely new invention. For example, the villages of Großfeldsheim and Dettingen form the municipality of Karlstein, named after a local legend involving Charlemagne. And sometimes there is no obvious centre to a municipality. These seven villages form the municipality of Lautertal, with the village of Hergenau chosen as the location of the town hall. But sometimes that's not big enough. The municipality where I live has a total population of 1,869, and this is its town hall. The municipality is big enough to make its own decisions, but hiring staff to handle all the administrative bureaucracy that's quite a stretch. This is routine stuff that we're talking about here. Marriage certificates, birth certificates, passports, registering a business, that kind of thing. If a municipality can't do that on its own, it can join with other municipalities and form an administrative community. Here is a map of the Schildkrippen administrative community. There are different expressions for this in different states, but they all describe roughly the same thing. All the municipalities still have their own mayors and their own councils, but they centralise a lot of the routine administration. And that is basically it. German municipalities in a nutshell. You can wake up now. Uh, by the way, your coffee's gone cold. A warm welcome to all the new viewers among you who have been lured here by the promise of videos about massive civil engineering projects. I'm sorry about that, it's the fault of the YouTube algorithm. Please feel free to venture frustration in the comments section below while I go and look for an interesting autobahn to talk about.